A man was speeding at 76 miles per hour when he lost control of his motorcycle. The motorcyclist hit a concrete retaining wall. He was thrown 118 feet before slamming into a gas station sign. Apparently lost control and had a pretty horrific crash. So from report, it sounded like he's, of course, not breathing on his own, has multiple amputations. Grossly amputated right mid tip fib, a mangled left forearm and left hand with multiple digits. There you go. We're getting everybody ready because it sounds like he's going to need a lot of work. I talked to the ER and it looks like it be a full night of work. 53-year-old Skip Sellers flew through the air and crashed into a gas station sign. He has suffered massive injuries to his limbs. Right. It sounds like you had an accident, sir. Right. A motorcycle accident. Right. Were you wearing a helmet? Hold that arm still, buddy. Come on. Hold that arm still. Now put your arm down. Arm down. Oh, 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 oh. Parts regular. Left hand is mangled. This extremity was pretty mangled. Did he have any neurovascular? None of his ears. Can we get a bucket of ice for the foot? They said his leg was found this is away from the, from the rest of him. They never saw the bike. He flew quite a distance. He even tumbled and ripped everything up. With one foot completely severed, Skip Sellers is in danger of losing all of his extremities. Can we see if he can move any of these fingers? Have you wiggle these fingers? Wiggle your right fingers. Wiggle your right fingers. Can you give me a thumbs up? Can you try to give me an OK sign like this? This is the worst case I've ever seen. So yeah, I'm a little scared. We have a mangled extremity over here. Bone's hanging out. It's about as bad an injury as you can get. Looks like something that you're not going to be able to save. Where is Kit Baker? Uh, got it. You immediately have to put your game face on. You cannot think about what if I do something wrong. You do something. Anytime you have an open extremity like this, you like to cover it as sterile as possible, keep it uh, a little moist, and uh, splint it up for his comfort. You have to get these wounds covered with a sterile dressing and tampon off the blood that's coming out. Hang in there, all right? You're going to have a lot of people poking on you for a little while here. It's just good, PJ. This extensor compartment on this hand is entirely gone. The bones are unstable. His right upper extremity will be lucky to make it. Just keep taking some deep breaths. Hardiman, can you move your left leg at all, your left foot? Uh, Good deal. Good job. He's got positive pulses down here. You have one intact extremity. That becomes paramount to save that extremity. We have to look at that huge wound on his thigh. You got that wet? How far down do I need it? All the way up here. want to cover the whole wound. You have to maintain blood supply to the foot, get the fracture reduced. We got one unit of blood going in. I knew this was my chance to put to practice what I know. Fractures there, so you want to pull longitudinally. That's what I've spent seven years of my life trying to do, is take care of Mr. Sellers. We're going to go straight to the operating room as soon as we can get him uh, intubated. It's about as bad as it gets for orthopedic uh, injuries. Uh, at least two traumatic amputations, and then his right upper extremity will also be lucky to make it. We've got to get him through it first. We have to get through the shock and everything, and so that's what we'll do. I hope we can help this guy out some. I don't know how much we can do for him. We gotta save him first, and then we'll talk about his limbs later. With his limbs mangled from a motorcycle accident, Skip Sellers is in the operating room. Game plan at this time is to get the retrograde femoral nail set up. We're gonna prep out both of these. We're gonna formalize the left arm. The orthopedic surgeons work to salvage his leg and arm. Semi-page plastics. I got a hot trauma up here. And I need you up here as quickly as you can get up here. Seen any of the film? No, I saw the chest. That was it. We looked at all the vessels to the left leg to make sure that the vessels were going to be viable. We're going to drape out these extremities, wash them out, irrigate to breathe those upper extremities, and probably amputate them. The most important thing is to cleanse the wound of all the weeds, concrete. Anything that is not alive has to go. 
because that will be a starting point for infection. This is pretty clean, Dr. Puckett. We're going to try to stabilize this femur with a, a rod. The biggest risk is an infection. Need some long guide wires. Got this, this femur. The rod can rotate or move, so we're going to put a screw that goes through the bone. It'll hold that rod from rotating. didn't have a pulse in the left upper extremity, so I knew we were going to am amputate that limb, and that's what we did initially. Got plastics involved for the right arm. He, he, he flexed him, I thought, just a little bit, but his extensor part was just totally gone. He could flex his fingers, and he also had a uh, palpable pulse. Um, no, I can't imagine saving that. I can't either. I think we're going to have to amputate it as well. We got plastics involved to have another opinion. They concurred. I have had so many nightmares. We are emotionally scarred, there is no doubt. I try just to not dwell on it. I think everybody gets through it in their own individual way. There's no sleeping after something like this. Only nightmares to be had. He has three limbs gone. One traumatic amputation is right lower extremity, and two that we amputated here in the operating room. So he has only one leg to stand on, literally, and that's just awful. The trauma team will have to be very vigilant in keeping him alive. Every organ system will be challenged over the next couple of days. We gotta get up to the ICU. Sats at 70, we need some help. Dr. Bond goes to speak to Skip Seller's parents. My name is Jim Bond. I was in on the uh, surgery. You know, we're going to have to pray for him pretty hard over the next couple of days. Fortunately, he doesn't have a head injury. It seems that it's all extremities. But uh, there was so much contamination that uh, bacterial infection will be something we'll have to really guard against. His body's in shock from what's gone on. You say what you do. We will do our very best. What he was concerned about when he came in was, did I hurt anyone else? And I thought that was especially poignant because it showed me uh, character. We're going to see uh, Skip Sellers again. It seems that he had a stroke. Prognosis is very poor because it's now been a week and he's not moved anything. He hasn't moved that left leg at all, and that's the only leg that we were able to save. Jason? Yeah. Hey. How's it going? All right. You still? I'm doing okay. Just now starting to wake up from the surgery today. I know when we talked earlier, you were worried about the stroke. I just hate it. I don't know what to tell you. I mean, we want to fix things so badly. We just got to wait the test of time, you know, right. see what comes back. It runs as a span, and then, you know, once it finishes its course, then you can start recovery. And coming back from it. You sure have been a trooper here every second since, you know, it happened. It's got to be tough. If I'm ever in this situation to have a son that performs the basic acts of kindness that you've done, I'll be proud. Mm -hmm. If I can do anything, I'd be more than happy to. Okay? Okay, great. Thanks a lot. No Thanks for all your help. No problem. Okay. They're just not always good stories. Happy ending stories. If you're only looking for positive outcomes in this profession, then, then you might find yourself uh, mentally not doing too well. We're going to go see Mr. Sellers. Um, he is uh, the triple amputee that we brought in well over a month ago. He's in rehab. Skip. You don't know me, but I know you really well, OK? I was uh, one of the first people to see you and take care of you when you came into the emergency room. Very My name good. is Jim Bond. Jim Bond? Yes. And uh, I translates to James Bond. Right? Yeah, that's right. Mm -hmm. What do you remember from that night? In, in the week of an eye, I could have been dead. Just as easy as I'm laying here, I could have been dead, too. You just lost control? And you... Yeah, basically, I just lost control. And I made one promise. I'm not going to crash into the motorcycle the rest of my life. They've kind of got you fitted for your arms or for your leg? See, if this arm starts showing more strength, they'll do something with it. 
Can you raise this arm at all? Yeah. Awesome. So this is your wound side here, and this was exposed bone. And look at that. Well, it's really taken well. That looks great, too. It's all healed. You're an inspiration. You really are, because I know it had to be tough. This changed everything. I'm lucky to be laying here. I don't think there's a good Lord upstairs has something else in mind for me before I'm gone off this earth. Now I just got to figure out exactly what he was thinking. <laughs> it's nice to meet you. All right, Skip. You didn't shake quite the same anymore, but it shakes. It shakes. <laughs> That's great. OK. I'm very glad he was on his job that night. There is a person who has enough mental fortitude to get through the injury, fight through it, and now has a great outlook on life. Cut that part down pretty good. <laughs> it's an inspiration to me and something that makes gets me through the next call night. I think everybody finds a way to get past what you feel is as far as you can go. And when you get there, you just have the mental fortitude to push on.